Um, back to the topic, um, choosing the topic. So when Rami um, first uh, told me about the presentation, I thought probably Mr. Wee and Mr. Anjum would cover all the hard science that has to do with diabetes, which they have done perfectly. So I thought, being an Egyptian, uh, what do I need to tell my fellow Egyptians about the practice of, of this diabetic service in the UK, which might be slightly different from Egypt, and whether there's anything that we can change or maybe introduce um, in Egypt that potentially could improve the service to our patient. So my presentation is brief, um, but I think it's important. It, it will introduce um, a new concept in Egypt. It's currently, in some places in Egypt, um, uh, Mansoura University and uh, Dr. Ali Moifi are amazing and they have a very good diabetic team and I'm sure the rest of the universities have, have an equally wonderful team. But I just want to talk about the MDT approach and the management of diabetic patients. Um, so let's start by the definition. So what does MDT approach mean? So MDT is the short of multidisciplinary team approach. So it's not only the diabetic foot. Currently, you have different MTTs and the different subspecialties in orthopedics. In the hospital I work in, we have at least four weekly MDTs running. So basically what, what you're doing is you're combining or involving people with different um, professional specialization or different academic disciplines. The NICE guidelines changed their, um, their guidelines in 2015 in the management of the diabetic foot and they included that now a standard of care is the um, having an MDT and foot protection services in, in the management of um, diabetic feet in 2015, section 2.2. So this is becoming the standard of care um, in, um, in, in the UK. Okay, so how do we set up an MDT? Mr. Anjum touched on the composition of the MDT and the, it's not set in stone. So the different hospitals have different composition and different ways of running their MDTs. But let's just have a look of the basic MDT. How does it look like and how does it work? So I believe the key person in the MD, in the M, diabetic MDT is actually the diabetologist or the endocrinologist for two reasons, actually. First of all, uh, the best treatment for the ulcers is actually preventing the ulcers, right? So with the tight control of diabetes, with keeping an eye on the foot, uh, making sure that the, there is now foot at risk criteria with the podiatrist can look forward to make sure that this foot does not progress to, um, to more serious stages, ulcerations, dislocation. So, so the tight control of the diabetes is the, is the best way, I think, to prevent the ulceration in diabetes. And even if, even if um, a patient who's poorly controlled is like one of Mr. Anjan patients, um, which I've helped him with. So the key again to the success of the surgery is to have tight control of diabetes around the surgical time, preoperatively and postoperatively, because otherwise you can do the best surgery, but you end up with a complete failure just because the blood sugar is not, is not tightly controlled. So diabetologist and endocrinologist is the key. And then we have the podiatrist. We don't have, uh, as we know, we don't have a podiatrist per se in Egypt. So it could be a specialized nurse. The podiatrist is very important. I believe his importance is because he is, he or she is the person who is in the most frequent contact with the patient. They see them very frequently. They see them on a regular basis. And they are the best, the first people who would pick up problems. And obviously they do all the bedside debridements, the wound dressings, we have the microbiologist. So the microbiologist, again, is very important. Um, antibiotics, when it comes to infection, either before surgery or even if we're not considering surgery. So the microbiologist actually provides a very important advice on the type of the antibiotics we need to give and the duration of antibiotics. So microbiologist is, um, is a crucial part of the um, uh, crucial uh, team member. So orthopedic surgeon and vascular surgeon, uh, I think in some hospitals, actually vascular surgeon would do both. Um, but I think we actually, in, a, in an ideal MDT, we need both. And they are very interactive with each other. So the hospital I work in currently, we have a dedicated person, dedicated vascular surgeon, who is the sort of the key person to contact if any patient with diabetic foot complication gets admitted to the hospital. And we have a dedicated orthopedic surgeon. And this is, this is very important in running an MDT. It's not just about 
meeting every week or two weeks to discuss patients in a room. The importance is, as Mr. Angelo said, to set a pathway because the pathway makes sure that the patients are not mismanaged and that there's no individualization in management, that all the patients will be managed according to a proper set pathway agreed on. And because most of the MTT meetings would run every week or every two weeks, and, the, and we will discuss the patients that we've seen over the week, but if the patient needs any sort of urgent attention within the week, according to the urgent attention he needs, there should be a key person like Mr. Anjum in Southampton, so that people can get to and ask for advice until the MDT um, until the MDT is 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 held. For judges, it's very important, especially when when we're considering surgery. And it's very important to know whether we have osteomyelitis in, bo in the bone or not, or it's only bone marrow edema. The extent of the osteomyelitis is sometimes very important in determining how further up, for example, with the amputation, do we go. So instead of just requesting a normal MRI scan and then waiting for the MRI scan to be done and then reported, having a radiologist and the team really expedite things and provides a very efficient and quick service for the, uh, for the diabetic patients. And last but not least, the plastic technician, Mr. Ranjam, um, uh, beautifully talked about the, um, the importance total contact cost and many patients now with ulcers are being entirely treated with total, total contact cost without any operative intervention at all. So we need a, a well-trained plastic technician um, who can fit that sort of a cost. And the authors, obviously, sometimes we have to offload the hind foot, sometimes we have to offload the forefoot. So the different types of shoe, the dark one, the reverse dark one, so we need an author that's ideally in the team. This is, this is the ideal team, or maybe even more that I've missed but it doesn't have to be all those team members. We can start with a smaller team and gradually um, gradually expand. So do we have to do all, do we have to make all that fuss about the diabetic foot complication? Is it is it really a big problem? Do you think it's really a big problem? Or is it just something that we see the odd patient every now and then? But let's have a look at the numbers. So 2.9 million people in the UK suffer from diabetes, expected to reach 5 million in 2025. Terrifying, right? So in England alone, so UK is four nations, England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. So in England alone, 6,000 people in 2009 and 2010 had amputations. 50% of the amputations, so 3,000 amputation in a year, it's been identified by the NHS as potentially avoidable. 650 million pounds, according to the NHS diabetes organization, spent annually on managing not the diabetes, the diabetes, the money spent on diabetes is more than 1 billion pounds. Money spent on the diabetic food complications is 650 million pounds. WHO and Internal Diabetes Federation claim that 85%, not, not even 50%, as Danish has said, so 85% of the amputations secondary to the diabetic complications are preventable. Every 20 seconds, a patient is losing part of his or his whole lower, or the whole lower limb because of diabetes. So putting all the numbers together, I think everyone is terrified. It's a huge problem. So we've been talking about the COVID, we've been sitting at home doing nothing because of the COVID numbers. This is by, by far much more terrifying than the COVID numbers, right? So just to put it in perspective. So do we have evidence that the MDT system works? Maybe the, 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 the English people or the rest of the world, the Americans and the Australians, maybe they're just spending money because they have money and this, the, the MDT is just a luxury. So is it a luxury? Or does it actually work? Has anybody looked into it to see if it actually cuts on hospital admissions, cuts on um, amputation, improves patient's care, minimize the uh, hospital stay? Let's have a look at the study. So I'll just skip you um, a few slides if you don't mind. Let me just get with the, to the, um, the, the bigger slides. So we have two systematic reviews which looked into the impact of the multidisciplinary team in the management of individuals with diabetic foot ulcers. So this study concluded that from the currently available evidence, there is definitely a positive impact of the multidisciplinary team on the diabetic foot outcomes. But because all the studies 
that have been looked into as part of the um, as part of the um, uh, systematic review, all of the studies are actually small and heterogeneous, and most of them are retrospective. So the evidence, in terms of if you come to level the evidence, the evidence is not that strong, but they agree that there is definitely a positive impact. And there's another study, uh, again, another systematic review of the effect of the multidisciplinary teams to reduce major amputation. So they looked in all the um, studies, which looked into the MDT effect on the amputation rates. And in 94% of the studies, it was found that there's a significant reduction in major amputations as a result, as a direct result of, um, of, of MDTs. And there are few other studies, sorry for going back and forward. So there are a few other studies. So this is in Diabetes Care, which is one of the biggest journal um, publishing on diabetes, the benefits of um, multidisciplinary approach in the management of recurrent diabetic foot ulceration. And it's a prospective study and demonstrated the effectiveness of the, multi of the multidisciplinary approach. Um, there's a joint, so this is not a, this is not a study per se, it's a joint statement um, from the Society of Vascular Surgery and the American Pediatric Medical Associations, and they're strongly recommending having an MDT for the management of diabetic patients. And they argue that there are actually not only patient benefits, but there's also physician benefits. So if you look at the patient benefits, instead of just going and reading every single word, you find that everything's reduced, everything in terms of time is reduced, time to assessment is reduced, time for one healing is reduced, time for surgical intervention is reduced, time for prep. So everything that has to do with the patient care in terms of time and waiting time is reduced. Physician benefits, some of us, some of these benefits don't actually relate to us. The Americans, they are paid by the number of the referrers. This is how it works. For example, number two, it increased incrementally increasing the patient refers. It's all about the money. So it's, it's not directly related to us, but why not? <laughs> um, and I think uh, point number five is actually very important. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it just in a few seconds. So it's if we have an MDT approach with proper documentation, the amount of publication and research that could potentially come from that, and it's, and it's a very strong publication, it's not only one department, like a, an orthopedic paper, so you can easily do an interdepartmental papers with um, vascular surgeons, with radiologists. So the amount of research that could come out of this um, um, MDT setting, and obviously all, we're all practicing evidence-based medicine now. So research, not only something theoretical, right? Research will eventually materialize in improved patient care. So, From an Egyptian perspective, and sorry, forgive me for the for the non-Egyptians, but from Egyptian, I'm, I'm concerned about the Egyptians. I'm concerned about improving the. Um, I have a passion about improving the 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 the, the quality of the care we offer for the Egyptian uh, patients. From an Egyptian perspective, it is something that we can't afford to do. No, the answer is definitely no. It's definitely something we can afford to do. Why? First of all, it's easy to set up. It's easy to set up, it's not costly. All you, net, all you need to do is to get a group of doctors, a signed key person at each individual um, department, get them to meet once every week in a room and review the patients who've been admitted. So the idea is actually simple. It doesn't take a lot of spending. It doesn't take um, infrastructure. It's just a very basic idea and very effective idea. So it's not expensive and it's not cost effective. And in Egypt, we never have problems with doctors, right? So even in small hospitals, we tend to have different specialties. So even in the smaller hospitals, most of the time we have a vascular surgeon, most of the time we have an orthopedic surgeon, most of the time we have a radiologist. So we're not missing on doctors. And it's all about the approach, it's all about doctors. So even in small hospitals, we should be able to set it up. And it's easy to maintain. So once, once you're started, and once it gets into the hospital routine, it's very easy to maintain. All you need to do is just keep it, keep it going week after week. And as I said, with proper documentation and the volume, not, an, not only the volume, but the quality of the publication and research will, will, definitely, um, will definitely increase. And definitely the, pay, the quality of the care we offer for the patients will definitely improve, which is, which is what we aim for. Um, 
sorry if the if you're expecting a sort of a more scientific hard science uh, presentation but i believe if if a few few guys take that to the local hospitals and say why not it look, it looks like something that we potentially could do let's do it let's get our colleagues let's start the diabetic food mdt you will make a huge difference in the quality of the patients of, of the diabetic patients thank you very much for listening and i hope uh, i hope you um, you enjoy that Thank you so much for, uh, for uh, this very interesting talk, Mr. Maghrabi. It was.